Hi guys, welcome back to Grania's Home and Kitchen. So guys, today I decided I'm going to start a change in my diet. I have put on, like everybody else, so much weight over COVID and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I looked into lots of different diets. I've done the keto diet, which was very successful. I lost lots of weight for my daughter's wedding, but I found it just is not sustainable. There are only so many eggs and so much bacon that you can eat, right? So. I looked at other alternatives and I checked out the Mediterranean diet, which basically is just a healthy diet, eating healthy food and food that's good for us. And that's actually what I need now, guys. I feel tired all the time. I just feel awful. And I was lying in bed last night and my tummy was sore. I had heartburn and I thought, that's it. I have definitely got to do something. So how has my diet been prior to this? Actually, my daily food intake is not bad. The problem with me is I'm a chocoholic. So once evening and nighttime comes, I start munching on chocolate and I become a glutton. I just can't stop. So I thought, okay, that's it. I'm going to make a change now. And I went grocery shopping at 7 a.m. this morning and I picked up some healthy vegetables and fruit, some chicken, some fish. And I thought I would share some of the items that I bought with you. And I thought if I did a little vlog through the week, um, not every day, obviously, but maybe two or three times a week, just letting you know what I've been eating and um, maybe put some recipes up and let's track my weight. My weight. I stood on the scales this morning and I was 175 pound. Guys, that is way overweight for me. I should be, my ideal weight is probably, like if I was to go by my ideal weight, it's probably 130 pounds, which I would never get down to. I mean, that isn't even within my goal. But I'd like to get down to 150 pounds if I could. So I thought, I'm going to cut the chocolate out of my diet. I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm not going to deny myself um, food groups in a huge way. In that an odd time, I will take a burger. Um, I do make my own homemade burgers though, so I know what there's nothing in them, it's just ground beef and I usually use like a lean ground beef. But um, I think the problem with diets are if you totally restrict yourself of certain types of food, it's unsustainable, unsustainable. But I'm going to generally do the Mediterranean diet and it, 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 luckily for me, it's food that I do enjoy. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things I bought this morning. This isn't everything I bought, but I got some fish. So you can have, like, I'm, I mean, I do like haddock and stuff like that, but they are, I actually couldn't find it other than breaded this morning. But I bought some frozen scallops, so I thought I could make a nice stir fry with that. And I bought some raw peeled shrimp. I did buy some chicken breasts and some chicken thighs as well, and I have them in the fridge. For lunchtime, I bought some chicken breast strips. Um, I thought because you can obviously you can eat bread on this diet, which is wonderful. We all need a bit of bread. Sometimes when we're hungry, the best thing to fill us is a quick sandwich. We normally eat this bread anyway. It's the Rudolph's whole grain, multigrain. Rudolph's multigrain bread, really, really good. So there's lots of things that we'll be able to do with that. I bought red onions because you can't have a nice salad without red onions. I got some avocados. I got some bananas, some grapes, and melon. So these will be my sweet tooth replacements instead of chocolate. I have a recipe actually on my YouTube channel for chicken cooked in zesty Italian dressing. This is great. I looked at the low fat one and the third ingredient was sugar. So I thought, you know what, because I'm just marinating in this, I went for the regular full fat one. Then for my salads, I bought the Renee's Spring Herb Italian dressing. This is it's really good. It just it's a little more superior to the zesty craft one. I got some arugula and baby spinach. So this is actually what we're going to have tonight. We're going to have my Mediterranean salad, which I have put up on my YouTube channel. But I'm going to do a quick recap of it tonight when I'm cooking. I'm just going to show you guys what I'm going to do for dinner and maybe it will inspire you. I bought some bulgur and quinoa. I bought some Italian farro. This is really good. Um, I got some pesto. Now, I'm not actually sure how pesto falls within the realm of things on a Mediterranean diet, but I thought for a nice, you know, sandwich, maybe um, I'm going to look into whether I can have like a low fat cream cheese or something like that. So I thought maybe a little bit of cream cheese and pesto would be nice on like, toast on toast. 
I bought sliced sun-dried tomatoes. This is excellent in my Mediterranean salad. And I used the oil from the tomatoes to coat the salad. Ooh, I got some strawberries. I love my strawberries. And then I'm not sure if I showed you, I got some plain Greek yogurt. So I'll mix these with the yogurt and some blueberries. And what I might do is I might make a puree out of the blueberries to sweeten up the yogurt because it takes a while for your palate to accustom to natural yogurt. Baby tomatoes, yum yum. I could just eat them straight out of the pack. I got some peppers, I got some broccoli, I got some cucumber, um, and that's just a smattering of what I got. That isn't everything that I bought. But I just thought it's healthy, vegetables, um, there's a bit of sweetness in there to, to curb my sweet palate because I have such a sweet tooth. Oh, lemons. They say to use lemons a lot. So I use this when cooking my fish and I can't drink lemon water. I cannot drink it. It reminds me of Lemsip back home and makes me gag, guys. So I can't drink it. But, um, but I'm going to try and use, it, use lemons when I'm cooking. So now this morning, Hubby and I are both working from home. I'm going to do two poached eggs on some of our multigrain bread. So I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how I do my poached eggs. So it's just starting to simmer now. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. And you're going to take your egg and you're just going to swirl the water. Give the water a, a good swirl. And then I'm going to crack my egg into the swirling water. Can you see that? So now my egg is cooking. Actually, this the simmer has kind of gone off it, so I'm just going to turn it back up again. Now I'm going to take my poached egg out, put it on the plate. Now. Okay guys, now I've had it in there for probably about two minutes and now I'm going to take it out and then just strain off the excess water. Use a bit of paper towel as well to do that. And now we have our two poached eggs on toast and I'm going to sit down and enjoy this with a cup of tea. Okay guys, I'm going to do a little bit of meal prepping and this is going to cover vegetables that I'm going to use for our lunch. I'm also going to add them to our salad for our dinner. We have some for tomorrow. So I'm going to actually make up a lot of it. And um, it's very tasty. It's actually kind of the base of my farro salad, my Mediterranean salad that I put up probably two weeks ago or so. So I'm just going to get everything prepared. I have some bowls with lids on them that I can put in the fridge. And then we can just take from that as we need it. So we can add, from, we can add to it if we want to make a salad. We can use it on its own if we just want to add it to a sandwich. All right, guys, this probably isn't very flattering for here, but hopefully in a couple of weeks that will be gone. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm going to prepare my red peppers. So we're going to roast these in the oven, or you can do them on the barbecue. I sometimes do them on the barbecue if we're cooking chicken at the time, but because this is for our lunch, I don't have the barbie on. So just cut your peppers in half, and we're going to de-seed them. So for de-seeding them, I usually just take a knife, cut around oops, the stalk like so, take out all this membrane that's inside or whatever it is, the veining, and then remove the pips. And there we have it. So now we're gonna take our olive oil and we're gonna sprinkle olive oil over the top. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, and I think this time I'm going to add a bit of garlic. Typically I haven't added garlic to it for my, for my farro salad, but because I am going to be kind of using this for a couple of different bases, I'm just going to add a little bit of garlic to the top of each one. Now this garlic is really easy because it's already done. If you were, if you were um, Crushing garlic, you wouldn't probably put as much as this, but I just find it doesn't have the, as strong a flavour as freshly pressed garlic. A little bit of salt and pepper. And into the oven for probably 
probably 15 or so minutes. I just want it to be nice and soft. And if it can be a little blackened, all is the better. That's what I love about the barbecue because you can really blacken it on the barbecue. Okay, so pop this in the oven. And now we will get to preparing the other vegetables. So while I'm waiting for the peppers to cook, I'm going to take my farro. So it's Italian, let's make sure it's the farro I have here. Italian farro and I'm going to take my low sodium chicken stock and I'm going to prepare this as well. So I'm going to bring the chicken stock to the boil, then I'll add the farro and I'll cook it for about 12 to 15 minutes. And I'm going to take some baby tomatoes and these have already been washed because I used them on the weekend. And I'm just going to have them. These are so good and they're so crunchy and fresh. We are going to go for a walk after dinner and guys, I, my goal is, I was always very athletic when I was young, you wouldn't know that by me now, but my goal has always been that I'd love to start jogging. I have no interest in the gym, I have no attention span, um, I, like literally I, I even tried what's happened curves and I even got bored in the few minutes I was using each machine. But jogging is something that appeals to me. So we're going to start, there's a running track up by my son's old school and we're going to start there. So I'm just going to walk and jog and walk and jog to try and build up some stamina there. And I would love to build up to doing, is it the Sunday morning run or the Saturday morning run where you do 5K? If I could do that, that would be an absolute achievement. But we're coming into winter, so I need to get myself fit very quickly because I don't think it's something you'll be able to do over the winter months. So that's my goal, guys, and hopefully I can reach it. Um, I think that I would just absolutely love that. Oh, my family actually are runners. Um, my daughter's, Ali doesn't run now because she's a baby, but the, all the others run. And I, like, as I say, I was very athletic in my, in my day. So there is no reason why I shouldn't be able to do it. Even though I'm 56, it doesn't matter. I should still be able to do it. Okay, guys, so a red onion. I'm just going to slice it down. And I'm just going to break the onion into this. So when I go to the track and I do my first jogging adventure, Kieran's going to come and he's going to bring the camera. So you'll watch me probably go into cardiac arrest. That should be hilarious. Thank God my son's a paramedic. I might bring him along as well. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm motivated. I haven't felt this motivated since the last time I went on a diet, which was three years ago. Um, but now I don't want to call this really a diet, guys. I want to call this a change of lifestyle. There's no reason why I should continue eating the garbage that I have been eating for the past probably a year anyway. Well, especially since COVID actually. And like COVID, before COVID, I was about 164 pounds and now I'm 175. And I'm small, like I'm only five foot four. So, um, and it goes straight to my belly. So I'm gonna chop up some cucumber, maybe not the whole thing. And I'm just going to half the cucumber. Okay. So to this we're going to add some sun-dried tomatoes uh, these are already chopped so, uh, so I'm going to add the oil from this to coat the vegetables so let's get some I love sun-dried tomatoes you can't have enough of these guys so I'll just pour a little bit in okay so I'm just going to mix that through and look at the colors of that guys Okay guys, just quickly, so the farro is cooked. I strained off the chicken stock and I'm gonna let that cool down and then I'm going to put it into one of the other bowls. So my peppers are roasted. Now I'm gonna chop them up and add them to the salad. I'll actually let them cool a little bit before I put them in. Okay, so guys, I'm just gonna chop up the peppers into bite-sized pieces. When you cook peppers like this, it brings out all the fabulous flavors in them. Okay guys, so I just very lightly, I know just very lightly toasted it. 
um, and you're not supposed to have butter on the Mediterranean diet, but there's some things in life that I cannot live without, and butter is one of them. And uh, I'll just put some of this on the sandwich. And we're going to take some of our chicken breast. This is the chicken breast I bought earlier today. And it's seasoned, so it, tastes, it smells really good. And I've got the kettle on for a cup of tea. And there is the makings of a delicious sandwich. So there you go, guys. Mediterranean vegetables with chicken in a multi-grain bread. Okay guys, it's evening time now. It's gonna look like I just ate all day, but it, I actually, it's now quarter to eight. Can you believe it? So the sandwich I made for lunch today was delicious, except I could only eat half of it. I put way too much in it. So I was going to do my Mediterranean salad tonight, but I've decided I'm not actually going to make the full salad. I'm just going to heat up some of the farro and I'm going to add the vegetables to it and I'm going to do it just as a side dish. Um, because we actually were so full with that sandwich today, the two of us aren't really that hungry. But I just wanted to quickly go over my zesty Italian chicken. Guys, this is so easy. I have the barbecue on. I do have a video up on it, but I'm just going to give you a very quick run through it again. And this is so good because the vinegar, I guess, in the zesty Italian dressing almost marinades the chicken. And it's always so juicy and beautiful. So two chicken breasts. Zesty Italian dressing. It's by Kraft, but you can also buy it in President's Choice or No Name. This is amazing, guys. If you have a Costco near you, this is, it's called a, an organic no salt seasoning. It's amazing. If you don't have this, you can actually get any other seasoning, don't worry. Um, I used to use the red pepper and garlic seasoning. So whatever seasoning you like, and then some garlic. You can use fresh crushed, crushed garlic as well. Like about, I usually put about a tablespoon of garlic in. Um, so I'll just maybe put just two of them and it depends on how many I'm doing. If I'm doing a, a big load of chicken, I obviously put more in and then the seasoning, just maybe put two tablespoons in. I usually just shake it in. Okay. And same with this. I just kind of squirt it in guys. What would I say? A quarter of a cup maybe. Um, and okay, I'm just going to put like. You saw what I did there, just a good scratch. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to mix that around. And the barbecue is heating. So when the barbecue is hot enough, we cook these usually on the top um, shelf of the barbecue so they don't burn. But they even smell delicious just like that. Okay, so it's the two of us. So I'm just going to put about, I guess, three tablespoons of farrow into the bowl and I'm actually going to heat that up actually. I'm just going to put them into this bowl and when the chicken's ready I'm going to heat the farrow and add it to our delicious vegetables that we prepared today. Okay guys so I've take I've heated the farrow in the microwave just for 45 seconds. The chicken breasts were huge, which means they're probably full of water. We know what that deal is about. So I'm just going to eat a half a chicken breast, but Kieran's going to have the full one. My vegetables that we made earlier today. I'm going to throw in the warm farro. Mix it through. It's delicious when the farro is warm. Even in the salad, it's delicious when it's warm. And there we have it. I like it. Here's the man himself. It's actually dark out now, guys. We're so bad. So now I'm just going to put this on our plate and we are going to enjoy it. So there we go guys, zesty Italian chicken with Mediterranean vegetables and farro. I will be back probably in a couple of days if I have time, if not it'll be next week and I'll give you an update and hopefully I will have lost some weight. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video. If you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up and if you could subscribe that would be amazing. If you have any questions or comments don't forget to ask below. So guys let me know if this is a theme you'd be interested in and if you do want to follow me on this journey. Take care guys.